coming up on this edition of DMPS TV News. Learn about Governor Brandstad and Lieutenant Governor Reynolds' blueprint for education reform as they spoke at schools in the district in the past month. See why East High School students were treated to a red carpet event and a movie premiere. While the presidential caucuses were in full swing in Iowa, Hillis Elementary students held caucuses of their own. Stay tuned for all of these stories and more. Hi, and welcome to DMPS TV News. I'm your host, Cindy Holland. Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds visited East High School to see some of the recent challenges and successes of Des Moines Public Schools' largest high school. The Lieutenant Governor toured some of the unique programs and services offered at East High. The final stop of her tour was at the Walker Building, which is home to an educational learning center and a nursery for young parents attending the high school. Just a couple of days after her visit to East High School, Reynolds accompanied Governor Terry Branstan and held a town hall meeting in the multi-purpose room at Central Campus. The purpose of the town hall meeting was to speak with the public about their blueprint for education reform that was unveiled in October. One of the key elements of the Branstan and Reynolds blueprint calls for third grade students who are struggling with literacy to be held back and would be accompanied by an array of intensive interventions designed to catch kids up. Branstad and Reynolds most recently paid a visit to Capitol View Elementary School to read with third grade students and to speak to the media about their reform plan. Branstad pledged that preschool smaller class sizes and interventions in kindergarten through second grade will be priorities under whatever reform package emerges before being formally proposed to the state legislature. You can find a copy of the proposal in the For the Record blog on the district's website. Students at East High School celebrated their achievement of winning the National Get Schooled Attendance Challenge. Over the course of the seven-week challenge, the student body raised their attendance by 2.7%, helping them to win the Midwest Championship and to tie for first place among the 73 schools that participated. So we just wrapped up a National Attendance Challenge where we had 70-some-odd schools across the country, middle and high schools, sort of in a friendly competition to see which school could improve their attendance the most over seven weeks. Paramount Pictures, the Get Schooled Foundation, and KISS 107.5 reward the entire East High School student body by providing a red carpet premiere screening of Paramount's Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. More than 30 buses hauled the students out to the Windsong Theaters for the premiere. We want uh, to recognize our kids for doing what they're supposed to be doing, working hard at uh, school and raising their attendance and thus we have this great, uh, great reward day with the red carpet event and the premier Mission Impossible 4, so it's very neat. So just really giving students an opportunity to speak up, let the world know what matters in their education, and then track how successful they're actually being in staying committed to their education. No, I think you know the Get Schooled program has really benefited our students, and and we've seen a great increase of our attendance. And um, we're actually going to start another uh, challenge in January with Get Schooled. It's a college dollars challenge, and uh, we're really excited about that. Who knows what the reward will be if they are able to defend their title? But one thing's been established already: the mission's not impossible anymore. East High School students weren't the only ones in the district to be set on a mission recently. Sixth grade students at Merrill Middle School were given one dollar by the school's PTA, their mission, to see how far that dollar could go within the community. It was all part of their Dollar Doing Good project assigned by science teachers at Merrill. The project challenged each sixth grade student to do as much good in the community as possible with their single dollar of seed money. Students then worked individually or in teams during the month-long project. We caught up with the science classes as they presented and celebrated their accomplishments with each other. We, uh, we wanted to donate money to the ARL, um, but we also thought that if we rake people's leaves, we'd be helping them out too. So it pretty much would be helping two, two different things at the same time. Plus I also ran miles for pledges to get even more money when I wasn't raking. After the project's second year in existence, Merrill students have generated over $16,000 in cash donations and have donated more than 4,000 items to charitable organizations throughout Des Moines. It changed the way that I feel about the community because first I was like, yeah, it's okay, the dogs, I, they can get food and stuff, but now that I saw that I can raise as much money and that the dogs can actually have food and shelter and stuff, I'm kind of happy. 
if you really, I guess, put your heart to it and try hard enough, you can pretty much do anything. And it was also a lot of fun. On the day of Iowa's presidential caucus, Hills Elementary School held its traditional cookie caucus. Chocolate chip, M&M, and sugar cookies vied for students' votes. Students in each grade took their turn to cast their votes throughout the day. The voters presented their registration cards and listened to brief remarks from delegates for each cookie before organizing according to preference. The Cookie Caucus is um, an experience for the kids um, to know how the process is for the real caucus so they know what they're doing. And it's just a fun thing that uh, the school likes to do. As fifth grade teachers here, we thought it's very important to take this opportunity you know, while we have this happening in our country and really being the first in the nation for the caucus here in Iowa, to use that as a learning tool for our kids. So it's a natural process, it's happening out in the community, so we're teaching them what's your responsibility as a citizen and what does it mean to elect a president, what does it mean to vote, and I think it's really important for them to start understanding that. And the fact that we are not electing actual candidates, we're electing cookies, that made it even more engaging and more fun for elementary level students. So just that whole aspect has increased their interest in the whole political process. It's made things and made voting a lot of fun. And they're talking about it at home. Buy cookies because who doesn't like a cookie? And the fact that they get to eat their candidate when they're done voting, that just made it all the more perfect. Votes were tallied and a sample of their favorite cookie was distributed to each voter before declaring chocolate chip the winner at the end of the day. In the cookie caucuses, even defeat tastes sweet. That's all for this news edition. I'm your host, Cindy Holland. Thanks for watching.